Remember back in 2013 when the Celtics traded Kevin Garnett and Paul Pierce to the Brooklyn Nets? Well, amidst all the players and picks, Boston included the 2017 first rounder. And in a draft day trade, the Nets used that 27th pick to select Kyle Kuzma out of Utah, only to throw him into the deal that sent D'Angelo Russell and the Mozgov contract dump to Brooklyn. Little did anyone know that the 6'9", 220-pound, three-year player out of Utah would have such a big impact. Typically, when someone plays two or more years of college basketball, the NBA puts some sort of a label on them. Too slow. Too small. Not skilled enough. As if not being a one and done is some sort of stigma that makes teams wary of upperclassmen. Yet time and again, it's these types of players who enter the league already polished, mature, and ready to help immediately. It's worth looking at his Utah career to fully understand why his play thus far in the pros has been a bit surprising. A brief look into his highlights in college shows you glimpses of what he could do. He had good post moves, could drive to the hoop, showed nice court vision, and occasionally would let a shot go from deep. But his numbers were a bit modest, although I do like the rebounding volume. His role in the Utah offense was a bit old school under former NBA player Larry Kristowiak, spending a lot of time setting ball screens, posting up, and getting putbacks. But there was enough evidence of his ability to suspect that once he got on the floor with other pros, it would unlock more of his potential. One reason is that there weren't a lot of creators on his team, guys that could break down the defense, force rotations, and allow him to attack off the catch. But it didn't take long for Kuzma to adjust to the speed and spacing of the NBA game. Suddenly, with better talent and shot creators around him, he had a lot more space to work with. In six preseason games, he averaged 17.3 points, four rebounds, 1.8 assists, and until the last game, was scorching from downtown at 57%. With good playmakers and a spread offense, he's been able to attack closeouts off of spot-up shots and drives, and he's shown enough flashes that Luke Walden will be forced into some tough lineup decisions. He is the quintessential small ball four something we know Luke Walton favors, and I would not be surprised if Kuzma slowly starts taking away minutes from Julius Randle. Another revelation has been isolations. In college, he hardly ever isoed and was not good at it, but so far, he's been able to showcase some terrific individual moves all around the court. Kuzma's ability to get out and run will be vital to his team, as Lonzo Ball will be influencing everyone out there to sprint for layups and open threes and I have no doubt offensive numbers for everybody will be healthy. With so much motion in the Lakers offense, he already has a natural feel for when and where to cut off ball to get scoring chances, and he's got a variety of finishes to choose from. I'd encourage Luke Walton to play Kuzma more the power forward position as he can set ball screens and pop out for three point shots, or can attack on the catch and blow by slower defenders on his way to the rim. With a 7-foot wingspan, he's tailor-made to be a very good defender, using his quickness to contest shots when he can take off from farther away and let his long arms bother the outside shots. He's got that wiry core strength that eventually will allow him to handle bigger inside players who try to abuse him down low. And I know Walden is ecstatic at his potential to switch the pick and roll and contain the point guard into contested jumpers. So sports fans, I have a really great opportunity to bring in Clint Parks, who is a basketball skills trainer and founder of Clint Parks Skills Academy in Southern California, and can be followed at Brotherhood05 on Twitter, and he happens to work with Kyle Kuzma on the court. So Clint, thank you so much for joining us, and uh, I'm really excited to talk about his development. Thanks for having me on, Coach Nick. Really appreciate it. You got it. Well, you know, so you've, you've known Kyle Kuzma for a while now, and I think that the biggest question everybody here has is how has he gone from, you know, what he had played at Utah and his style to it seems like a pretty big, you know, difference to what he's doing on the court for the Lakers so far in the preseason. So can you give us insight into how that metamorphosis happened? 
I think one of the biggest keys is just continuing to be um, relentless and diligent in his work, as he has alluded to in some interviews recently. And just, I mean, over time, when you continue to put that work in, and it just it leads to more confidence. And just the NBA game also helps as well with the spacing and how much room you have to operate and as an offensive player. And just a lot of it is just confidence, confidence and self-belief himself knowing that he can go to, go out no matter who's on the court and get it done at a high level. And I guess it's a stylistic thing, but, you know, because it seems to me like what I saw in college in the clips I've seen so far, they pretty much played him like a like a very traditional power forward, right? He's always looking to set a ball screen, doesn't really pop out for three on those ball screens, and then, you know, posting up down low a little bit. Is that how it felt like when you watched him in college? I mean, he, yeah, you could say he was more of a traditional four, but Coach Stoyak and the rest of the staff did a really good job developing him and um, teaching him, uh, I mean, the small nuances of the game, especially preparing him for the um, the next level because Coach K has experience. I mean, obviously he played in the league and coached in the league as a head coach, so that's very rare. That's one of the biggest things, especially in his jump shot. Like, they never... They never put him in a position where he couldn't shoot. I think he's just more confident right now, and that's a product of what we're seeing. Uh, is there anything that you feel like he did over the summer or as he prepared for the NBA season that improved his shooting? He shot around, I think, 31% in college from the three-point line, which is shorter. So do you feel like there was something that you guys did maybe over the summer that, that helped him? I, I think he's just continued to um, put in reps. It's something that mm-hmm. um, his mentor, his prep school coach, um, Vince Bracio has has talked about with him a lot as well. We both have is just um, continuing to put in work. And Kyle is, um, in my opinion, he's the hardest worker in the draft. And I mean, the results um, that he's had up to this point from summer league, even from the combine to preseason, I mean, and they kind of show that. Like he's just continued to put in work. He's not afraid to um, put on his hard hat every day and just get after it. And I always tell people that. One of the biggest things for a kid leaving co- coming from college to the pros is that, you know, he graduated. He had a year left, but he finished his degree. He doubled up on a lot of classes last year um, to make sure he was done. And so now, without having that stress to worry about class, it's it's just all hoops all day. Like, you're just worried about your game. Like, that's your job. There's no more classes to worry about. There's no more tests to worry about. The only test is your game. Like, that's your game every day is to wake up and figure out how I'm going to get better and how I'm going to make my my weaknesses stronger and my strengths even stronger as well. So, I mean, that's what we're seeing right now from him. Well, let's look at this Lakers season as we wrap up here. And uh, what do you see him doing this year? Uh, what are his goals overall and, and how will he accomplish those? I mean, for me, it's just um, continue um, just to continue to put the work in every day and then you let the chips fall where they may. As long as he does that, I think he's um, going to have a great year. I mean, it's an 82 game season, so there's going to be there's going to be ups and downs, peaks and valleys, but just always staying even keel. You know what I mean? Never too high, never too low. And as long as he does that, you know, as far as individual goals, team goals, the team is helping the team win, just bringing, just doing whatever it takes to help the team get victories. I mean, if he does those things and plays hard and plays hard and competes every night then everything individually would take care of itself. <laughs> okay, I'm going to I'm gonna translate that. Uh, I think what you said was about 14 points a game, seven rebounds, and rookie of the year. <laughs> I mean, that would be, <laughs> if, that, if that's the end result, I mean, that, that would be great. I think he's the best rookie in basketball. Like, that's, that's, that's my personal opinion. And I think, but he has to go out there and, and just play hard every night and, and compete at a high level and, and just that I, that's what the league is about you know I've, I've had kids get to the league that are in the league now and, I, and I've seen what how what's made them successful Kawhi Leonard and Tony Snell and that's kind of what I just try to look back on when I give him advice on what he needs to do to be successful as well and he has that same mindset the mentality of work and he's a true pro already even though he's a rookie he understands where he's at and where, where, what he needs to do to get where he wants I mean I'm just really excited especially I know the city of L.A., the bas- people that are in the basketball, how much they care about um, the Lakers and the real fans. They're just going to love him because he's going to bring it every night. You can always count on that. 
Well, thank you so much for bringing it for uh, us on the show today, Clint. And uh, don't forget to check out uh, Coach Parks and his basketball skills training over at the Flint Park Skills Academy uh, out here in Southern California. So, uh, Coach, thanks for joining us, and uh, we'll talk soon, and we'll see how it plays out. Thanks for having me on, Nick. Really appreciate it. We don't know what will happen with Kyle Kuzma this year. Will Lonzo Ball get all the hype and the Rookie of the Year votes? Will Julius Randle continue to get more minutes? Or can Kuzma earn more minutes, score at a high rate, grab rebounds and defend, and help the Lakers surprise everyone by winning 35 or more games? I know we've only seen him in the summer league in preseason, but it's enough for me to see that he's a special player that plays the right way and will help his team win games. And that, sports fans, earns him a spot as my predictive Rookie of the Year. Sports fans, to see more of our great NBA content and analysis, make sure to hit the subscribe button, but also click the bell and adjust your settings so you can get an alert the second our videos drop. Because trust me, you're going to want them hot and fresh. You in?